All right. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for coming. It's 7 o'clock, and I will call the July 27th, 2015 school board meeting to order. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Mrs. Mayor, if you would do the roll call. I would be happy to. Um, myself is here. Lisa <laughs> Collins, here. Tim Manniker. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Tom Cruz. Here. Jeff Young. Here. Cheryl Hancock. Uh, she's excused. Thank you. And Anita Jacobson. I am here. Excellent. And then with six of the seven board members present, I will declare a quorum. Um, board norms reflection. You have a copy of the board norms in your folders, so take a look at those um, during the meeting and know that we adhere to those norms during our meeting. Um, approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. And with this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda? I would entertain, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. I would published. so move. Is there a second? Second. Kate has motioned and Tom has seconded. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion has passed. Public participation. Anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time, please come forward. And Francis Brown is coming forward. Um, we ask that a five minute I, uh, time limit per person be followed. Francis, if you could please. We give the Francis, if you could, um, is there a microphone? We're going to get you a microphone so that the audience can hear you. And if you would state your name and address just for the record, please. There you go. Thank you. Brown, a member of the Knights of Columbus at Holman. We have that Tootsie Roll Drive every spring where we stand in front of the local grocery store and collect money from the generous public. And so I have a check for $480 to present to the special ed program at the Holman High School. We do donate to five different organizations at this one. So I'd like to give this usually to the president. Oh, and Cheryl's <laughs> absent. Thank you, Francis. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? Okay, um, we'll move on to recognition and thank you. The 2014-15 Friends of Education. This is one of my favorite nights of the year. So, yeah, and I'm excited because it's my first time getting to participate with this and I've been hearing great things about this. Um, every year, we ask each school to nominate someone who has made a positive contribution to the education of students and in the Holman School District, yet is not an employee of the district. Um, criteria for this are things such as time commitment, um, volunteering within the school and out of school activities, um, advancing programs for students, and the effects that they have on the students that goes beyond the classroom and our building. So for the 14-15 school year, the following individuals were chosen in this honor. And what I will do, um, I'm going to announce in alphabetical order the names and those who nominate will present them um, as I come. So Jamie Bell is with us this evening um, for the Early Child 4K program. And Sue is going to talk. Thank you. Sue and Gina Galeazzi, a 4K teacher. Jamie, can you please come on up here? We have had the fortune of knowing Jamie for the last couple of years, and she has been very involved with our program. And Miss Galeazzi had Jamie's son in her class this past year, and she's going to write up or to read to you uh, what she had written as the nomination. 
Um, thank you. So uh, I had Jamie's son in my morning class this last year, and Jamie was a huge help in numerous ways. So myself and the rest of the 4K program, uh, we decided to nominate her for this. So uh, Jamie Bell is a parent of a child in my morning class. Over the school year, Jamie has volunteered numerous times in the classroom to help the students in class learn and grow. When she comes in, she is always willing to help with whatever we need. Jamie spends time putting together classroom materials for projects and activities, running learning stations, and helping at project time. During choice time, she works with students one-on-one -on -one or in small groups to help improve their academic skills. In April, Jamie and another parent came into our classroom to do a presentation for our students on autism. They also presented to other 4K classrooms to help students understand what autism is. They did a wonderful job and put a lot of time and energy into preparing for this presentation. Jamie is also an active member of our PTO. Jamie attends meetings regularly and donates items as needed. She also is actively involved in our family events and will bring her children to participate. Jamie has been a wonderful parent addition to our 4K program. We appreciate her help and support over the last year and would like to nominate her for the Friends of Education Award. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Next, we have Kristen Dahl Winther at Viking Elementary. If you could come up, please. We had quite a few nominations for Kristen, so I put together um, everything that people wrote. Kristen Dahl Winther was the president of our PTO this past school year. She has worked very hard to make the PTO a stronger force at Viking. She connected the PTO through social media and email lists to include anyone who has been to a meeting and to keep people updated throughout the school year. She has volunteered many hours for music programs, fundraisers, and fun nights. She has worked hard to make Viking a healthier place for our students by making sure we offer our students healthy choices, not only during lunch, but during snack time. Through Kristen's leadership, our PTO has been able to help our school financially in so many ways, including uh, 200 chairs in our four or five wing field trips, opera for the young, a sound system for our music teacher, mini grants for classroom supplies, such as books and games, playground equipment, and much, much more. Through Kristen's leadership, we have learned and, grown to learn, learned and grown together to make the world a better place. So thank you, Kristen. <laughs> OK, next up, we have Sue Angstead with Evergreen Elementary. We also had multiple nominations for Sue, and they wrote a combined submission. Um, so I'm going to read the nomination from Donna Baranek, a first grade teacher at Evergreen, and Christy Wopat, a fourth grade teacher at Evergreen. Sue has been volunteering in our classrooms this year and has been very helpful. She is ready to do anything you ask of her and comes faithfully every time she is scheduled to come. She goes above and beyond to learn the children's names and something about them, and is very open to working with all of our students. Sue is also a very involved member of the PTO. She is in charge of the script program for PTO. The script program has been very beneficial to our school. She spends hours and hours each week handling orders, picking up orders, <laughs> calling Becky, and finding new places to get script cards from. She also helps at school functions like the Fall Festival and has served as a room parent. We are lucky to have Sue as an evergreen parent. Our Friend of Education Award for Prairie View Elementary goes to Jody Anglerth.
Well, and there seems to be uh, quite the theme going on with PTO and that tonight. Uh, Jody also is a member of our PTO, a uh, very active member. We had multiple nominations um, uh, for Jody as well, um, as she's been at Prairie View ever since we opened with uh, her sons and that. So um, I'm going to read some of what uh, was submitted for her uh, nomination and then voted on and unanimously selected by all of the staff as well. Um, for the past year, she has been the treasurer of our PTO. Um, besides keeping our financial records straight for PTO, she's also put in countless hours with our script program, ordering script, finding new script, distributing script, depositing the checks, and everything that goes along with that, even curbside selling in the morning when the uh, parents were dropping kids off <laughs> as one of our new uh, angles on how to increase our script sales. So that was fun. Uh, without Jody Ingler's commitment to script, the program wouldn't be as successful as it is. Mrs. Ingler uh, can be found at the rodeo as well, helping organize our fundraiser, um, helping with the financial, the cash boxes, and counting the money afterwards, and then depositing it in the bank as well that late at night. Along with uh, her financial talents, she's also volunteered uh, her time in the classrooms, in numerous classrooms throughout the years. Uh, as well as uh, chaperoned on field trips. She's been a faithful volunteer in the classroom, and with little direction, she is able to do whatever she's asked to do uh, very quickly, working with uh, small groups, individual students, or even um, larger groups in any educational activity. Her kind and gentle personality uh, really uh, is realized as an asset in the classroom. Prairie View Elementary is lucky to have um, Mrs. Englert as our Volunteer of the Year. Thank you so much. And our friend of education for the high school is Renee Cabot. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to um, inform everyone that the high school friend of education is Renee Cabot for the year. Renee is the proud parent of two sons, and one of them has graduated, and the other one will be a junior this year. Um, one of the reasons Renee has been nominated is because on graduation day in the evening, starting at 9 o'clock, and it goes till 3 o'clock in the morning, we put on, I shouldn't say we, the parents put on a senior lock-in it's called the World Tour, and Renee is the person that is in charge of putting on um, that whole program. Many, many hours of volunteer time, many, many hours of putting together meetings, and she is at that school as much as I am in the evening during events doing fundraising activities. So we at the high school are very proud to have Renee as our friend of education for the year. So congratulations, Renee. Friend of Education Work is with Home and Middle School, and it is Jeff Rand and Company. <laughs> I'm extremely excited to be here tonight to, uh, I guess, introduce Jeff, but also to introduce Dace McAndrews, who is our teacher that nominated Jeff um, and I guess I would just like to start very briefly by saying thank you so much for all you do uh, for NHD um, you make it so welcoming for our kids and it is an awesome project and it would be impossible without you so thank you um, I'm going to echo uh, Mr. Rubler's statements and say thank you so much to Jeff for all that he does um, National History Day I think is a project that many people in the community, many of you are aware of. Um, it's sort of a rite of passage for eighth grade students and it involves the work of so many students or so many people, um, the eighth grade teachers, uh, people in the office and all kinds of people from the community um, who come to interview the students on that day. But uh, the person that we'd really like to honor tonight is Jeff because uh, one of the things the students do as part of National History Day is to do some really significant research and we take a field trip to the La Crosse Public Library shortly after Christmas, and Jeff is one of the people who is incredibly helpful. Um, the entire staff there is really helpful, but Jeff sort of goes above and beyond. We hear students come back from that library field trip saying things like, um, wow, I got so much 
particularly good stuff. Yeah, that genius who sits behind the reference <laughs> desk was incredibly <laughs> helpful. Um, and, and we know that they're talking about, about Jeff and all the things that he does. He pulls amazing things for the students. Um, they, things that they have found and he sees the topics list and, and, and pulls things that he knows that might be helpful for them. Um, he always comes to judge at our school event and I think when he looks at the websites he spends, I don't know, 10, 12 hours before he even comes to our National History Day event, maybe more than that, um, <laughs> looking at the students' websites and making incredibly detailed notes for them so that they have some excellent um, critique both positive things and things that they might be able to work on he phrases it so well that the students feel like um, they have grown tremendously from the comments that he makes um, he uh, looks at the uh, projects at the regional level um, he meets with um, students afterward this year he came after work one day I think it was 530 something like that and met with a student and I at the middle school to give them some extra feedback before they went to the state competition and um, like Mr. Vogler said, um, National History Day is a, is a massive project and we wouldn't be able to do it without you. Thank you so much. <laughs> And then our last Friend of Education Award um, from Sand Lake Elementary is Shirley Seisha. We got a whole crew here today. <laughs> um, I'm Teresa Eric Simone, kindergarten teacher at Sand Lake Elementary School. Um, and this is Mary Huff, kindergarten teacher, and Susan Gady, kindergarten teacher. And then we have the retiree kindergarten teachers from Sand Lake also. <laughs> so wow. quite the cheering crowd here for, for Shirley. So um, her, um Shirley has been a volunteer in kindergarten since she retired after teaching kindergarten for over 37 years. She comes in every week and has been volunteering now for over four years. She is either busy doing clerical work, prepping projects for our students, or working with our kindergartners. Shirley goes above and beyond in everything she does. She will come and volunteer at special events at our school like fun, Family Fun Fest, she comes to watch our kindergartners perform in their music program, and sometimes she even insists on taking things home with her to work on. And I would just like to add in there too that um, she has a real knack um, when she comes in your room of just picking out the little guy or gal who needs an extra little hug or um, maybe a little extra little work um, help on their little sheets or things like that. Um, she really. Um, is a true teacher at heart that way and just um, you never even have to give her directions for anything. I'd like to add that Shirley, her compassion and her bubbly personality just really reaches out to kids and they have a special connection with her and we feel so happy and blessed to have her with us. So thanks Shirley. Um, just some other things that she does. She reads with our students and she always is bringing them in little treat bags and um, the students just really look forward to seeing her. Um, she definitely makes a special bond with our kindergartners, and um, she's made a very positive impact on many little lives. Um, her kindness and sincere way does not go unnoticed, and that's why we wanted to nominate her for this award. She's a very humble person who um, does not do things to be rewarded, but she does them because she cares. And there's a little quote that says, a friend is someone who does things that count, but don't, doesn't stop to count them. Um, Shirley Seisha is a true friend of education. So thank you. I just want to make one comment and thank all of you for all your time and commitment for all of our students. And obviously, it definitely, the staff is very Hap, help, very glad that you're so helpful too in the manner within the schools and the administrators are. So thank you so much for all your time because we know how busy everyone's daily lives get, but you still made time to help out. So thank you. And we're going to post for a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.
Okay, uh, and then we will move along to district administrator's report. Okay, I just have a few items I wanted to um, highlight tonight. One is, it's been in the news some, but I just wanted to get this on the record too, is to congratulate our nutrition services department and the FFA and students at the high school. They won a national award th from the Food Management Magazine, the 2015 Best Concept Award, um, with the winner, winning, winner chicken dinner that they held last year. So mm -hmm. thank, great, great job to them. Um, another thing, we just completed summer school, uh, high school summer school, July 2nd. Um, many students took many different courses. Um, but also on Monday, July 20th, we had about 600 students enter the doors at Viking Elementary for summer school for elementary. And um, over 100 students at our middle school are attending summer school. So um, great job to the staff and for organizing that and making all the students feel welcome. And also um, for our students coming and enjoying some time with us this summer. And then also this last week, we had a Wisconsin statewide mathematics um, initiative workshop here in the district. We hosted um, this region of the state of this mathematics workshop. Um, we had 17 teachers participate, which says a lot about the dedication of our staff. And uh, also a lot of other educators around the area came and joined, joined us for that event. So that was um, very well done. Also, um, we are in the process, as you, we know, Jan, we were sad she'll be leaving us here in another week, two weeks. Anyways, she's like, no one. No. But anyways, I'm like, three weeks, four weeks, no. Um, but um, in the interview process, um, our plan is uh, on August 3rd, we're going to have finalist interviews um, so we can keep things in motion and moving. As we know, technology and with our referendums that passed, it's going to be very important to keep moving along with that. And lastly, um, the state budget, we yeah, there's always an update on state budget. Uh, the Wisconsin Act 55 was approved, which basically f helped finalize our 2015-17 biannual, biannual budget um, with 104 vetoes from our governor. Um, and um, in the district, there's lots to sift through and, and get through. Um, a few areas of focus is um, the teacher licensing, which will be very minimal from um, how that ended up. And uh, accountability is a topic. Um, we'll be required to do our school report card and have our district report card each year. But I want to let you know we will not have one for this school year. Um, it'll start next year. Um, and then assessment is also large. Our freshmen coming in will not have to take the Aspire um, this fall in ninth grade, just in the spring, which is kind of which is nice for them. But um, we will be in the planning process for the. 16, 17 school year where students will be required to take a civics exam um, for graduation requirement. So these are just the beginnings of many topics of discussion we'll be having in our district. And that, just wanted to update on that. So that's what I have. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, moving along to reports and discussion. Um, item 10.1 is the 2015-16 staffing plan. Okay. So you're back on. All right, Jan and well, you can right yeah, with Jan, Wendy, yeah. and Dr. Mueller. Where's the remote? Okay, as we get it situated here. Um, I'm gonna start. Um, earlier this year, we, the, Jan and Wendy brought forward two positions that they were looking for approval. One being our school information. Are you able to see it on your screen up there? No? Okay, we'll get it for you in a minute. But one is, was the school. Um, information system specialist and one was the 1.0 assessment and data coordinator position and we had set aside in our budget for both positions 160,000 um, since I've joined and been with us here I've had a lot of conversations with Wendy and with Jan um, about these positions and we've just had a lot of talk and been brainstorming of 
how can we look at both of these positions and get accomplished what we need accomplished with um, being fiscally responsible in that and so forth within those positions. So I'm going to turn it over to Wendy to kind of talk about um, how we have shifted this um, from two positions to actually uh, one position. Well, thank you. Um, so what we plan to do for the 1.0 student information system specialist as to repurpose the dollars from my 10-month secretary to help fund the position and this person will be the holder of all the infant and campus data will validate and check the accuracy of our data which I know a number of us have been doing the last last week and even today thank you Joni and filter our data also for our continuous improvement so we can continue working on that aspect and support all users in our district with training. The second part is to restructure our current math coordinator position to be an instructional service coordinator and in that way this that person will be able to fulfill some of the require our responsibilities that were in that prior proposal and we will continue to review this plan to see if it is meeting all of our needs with this plan we will need to continue to contract with a tech expert to complete the more complicated programming responsibilities that were in the other job description and proposal that we had shared so a general overview and this is for your information tonight is going from two positions we are um, asking for approval of one position of a student information system specialist um, as to we figured that we can restructure a current position and with our contracted services with the wise dash local we would be be able to accomplish most of what we wanted to um, we just want to try this out and kind of evaluate and see how it goes um, before we would move on with other staffing so, is there any questions looks like it oh. yeah. okay so we'll be bringing this to our August 10th meeting then for um, approval okay all right thank you thank you okay. <coughs> uh, moving thank along you. to item 10.2 the fund balance designation Julie Holman Or Jay Clark. Either one. <laughs> There's no mistaking me uh, and Julie. Um, mm -hmm. Julie um, had a family obligation develop over the weekend, and so um, I'm going to present the issue that uh, she actually did all the work to prepare. Uh, I, what I'm we're looking for right now is that uh, issue paper. Yeah. Oops. So the board has an issue paper on uh, fund balance designation. Uh, technically, fund balance is the difference between assets and liabilities, but nobody really cares to hear about the technical part of accounting. Uh, what I would tell you is that fund balance is a measure of the organization's fiscal health. Um, this can go too far, however. As you may remember, our UW system was identified as having a fund balance without designated purpose and maybe too large in amount. And we've worked hard as a school district to make sure that it's clear what our fund balance is designated for and how much is an appropriate amount. And that's really the content of this issue paper, to inform the board what that amount is how it breaks down by the various funds we have in the organization and then even further than that specific categories we don't dream up these categories on our own actually the government accounting standards board that's that GASB that you see in their acronyms government accounting standards board defines the categories for us and so then what we do is we bring this information to the board and share it with them and ask them to approve the designations as presented. We then share these with the auditor who reviews them and makes sure it's accurately represented in our annual report. 
So in addition to uh, the numbers and the breakdown that you see on the report, I want to remind you that uh, this does fit into a larger overall system of fiscal management in the district. And here, in fact, is the school district's fund balance measured as a percentage of total expenditures as reported over a long period of time. And you can see the little red arrows pointing down and pointing up. That looks like a pretty narrow margin between those. It is. But that's what the board has said to administration. This is the result we want you to achieve. We feel this is a responsible level. And this is to avoid what well, happened to outside agencies, where there was some suggestion that there was too much. We've identified for what we will use this fund balance and set some limits upper and lower. And we have continued to operate in the last three years and plan to again for the next, uh, for the future years, operate within those margins. So um, you have the issue paper, you have the breakdown of designation, you know that fund balance is a healthy thing, too much can be a bad thing, but that's why the board has goals, upper and lower limit. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to entertain those. This is on the agenda for action as well tonight because we're trying to make sure that this designation gets incorporated into the fiscal year end audit that's taking place right now. So that's why it's here for you tonight. Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions? No, thank you, Jay. Uh, <clears throat> Ten point three, the budget development calendar. Oh boy. Um, I actually have a copy of that budget development calendar. So um, uh, annually, uh, this is actually 2016-17 budget. I think that's the most important starting point here, is that we're not talking about the 15-16 school year, the school year we're just entering. This is actually the early kickoff activity for the 16-17 budget development cycle. And I would say to you that the uh, budget development calendar and list of activities um, is not much different than it was the prior year. There were some timing of events because board meetings fall on the fourth, second and fourth Monday, and leadership team meetings fall on, uh, is it Wednesday or Thursday? Anyway, the third Thursday. Sometimes these things don't line up the way you want them to, so we had to make some adjustments relative to that. But the sequence of events, the events themselves, and uh, the board's involvement has not changed. But we bring this to you each year so that if the board wishes to make changes or input, um, that opportunity uh, is provided. Rem the, for those of you who have been on the board for a while, you'll remember that several years ago there were specific concerns about the budget development process, early input by the school board on the budget variables. Remember, that was number one. Well, it was one of three. The second was planned administrative team input in the budget development process. And the third was criteria that were uniformly understood and applied in the allocation of resources for un and underfunded needs. And those three things are still in the body of this document. The last thing I'd share is that these are identified as estimated. You see on the top of that uh, second column from the right, um, it's a plan. Uh, we know that last year, in a biennial budget process for the state, sometimes the schedule we have doesn't match up with the schedule of those who impose some finance decisions upon us have. So uh, we need to be fluid, flexible uh, when those types of things come up. But it's a good thing to have a plan and have people starting to work towards specific dates. Um, and we did discuss this at the Finance Committee meeting tonight. I'd turn it over to Tom or Lisa to make comments. Well, we had a healthy discussion <laughs> about um, of the criteria involved with identifying those areas that are the priorities and I think the biggest message that I walked away from that meeting having learned was that you know that keeping in mind the whole issue of keeping in mind the whole issue of um, stakeholder feedback and getting thoughts and, and opinions and 
um, on how to direct that the budget goals in the whole process not just the unmet needs um, but just the budget development process in general so it was, it was interesting so a good discussion on the input on the kind of the front end of this from the people who are right in the front lines and how is their input being incorporated into the process we talked also about what performance gaps do we look at what data do we use to drive the decision and how do we match up the oh, anecdotal and the frontline perceptions with the performance gaps and it was felt that it was important to have a balance of all of those things so that the best decisions would be made yeah, I agree, and I think also it was, Lisa definitely highlighted that we can kind of get complacent on this stuff, and it was just we got to stay on top of, you know, <coughs> budget process and all the stakeholders, citizens, educators, everybody. It's, it's, it's easy to just say, well, let's just do the same old, same old. Well, maybe that's not always a good idea. Proactiveness is key, so I thought you did a good job. And so while there's nothing in this budget development calendar that talks to those points, I think the members of the Finance Committee want to come here tonight before the board and as a public record and say those are important components to include in the process. Does that make sense, what we're saying was the input from the committee? Are there any questions? Uh, I'm sorry. Two-hour meeting was a lot of... A lot of energy there. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Comments? No? Okay. I was going to say thank you, Jay, but I don't know if you are taking care of this next item, too, the employee conduct, the 10.4, or is Melissa here? I can, but... I wasn't was, sure. It, but just, if you didn't mind, Jay, it was a follow-up from your prior meetings you had earlier. It was The language was just in the handbook and in the... Okay. Yeah. And so those of you on the Personnel and Governance Committee, you can help with this because we did lots of work um, related to the uh, policy that covered this issue. And like so many of the other things as we adopted an employee handbook, we thought employees should go to one place right. to find information. Is it the employee handbook or is it board policy? Right. And the misconduct language was in the policy. And we said really it should be pulled apart and placed into the employee handbook in the respective sections so it would be easy to locate for employees and for administration. We all would know to, where to go to find that information. So that's been done, but we never went back once we incorporated all those things into the handbook and deleted the policy. So now if something changes in the policy of the handbook, the two would be out of alignment. Right. So the answer is to just delete the policy. And then also, in parallel with that, in the employee handbook, there were sometimes references to the policy by number. And so we need to get rid of those references in the employee handbook because once the policy is deleted, you don't want to refer <coughs> excuse me, people to the policy that doesn't exist. So is that what we're looking for? Yes. Perfect. Thank that you for exactly. a wonderful summary. Maybe a bit much, huh? No, exactly. <laughs> Quick question on that. As, as just as I read this, so that new language is not yet in the employee handbook? Because if I read <clears throat> bullet point eight here, it says the language was not yet placed in the employee handbook. That is but true. Being to delay. That is true. Melissa has been holding on to those as we wait to delete the policy and so the work has been done on those and those have been approved but they sit waiting to be put into the handbook thank you for the clarification and that will be done simultaneously with the yep. deletion yep. any other questions or comments okay thank you jay i think you're finished now <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, we'll move along to consent agenda items. Um, are there any agenda items that you would like to consider separately? All right. Hearing none, I will then entertain a motion to approve the items on the cons consent agenda as presented. I would so move. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay. okay. Kate moved and Tom seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
motion carried and board member reports and discussion I'll call upon board members in the order of the roll call and you can present any comments or committee reports you may have um, first we will go with mrs. mayor um here's a question for Jan we are you here at the next board meeting is this your last one okay that's what I wanted to know um, I get really emotional, but I'm going to try not to <laughs> right now. But um, I'm probably going to start a series of thank yous to you. When I think back before I was on the board, all you did to present to this district with its tech needs, all your patience, all your knowledge, all the help you've given, like, newbies like me whose computer doesn't work you're always there for us but mostly you've been there with this huge umbrella over you guiding and directing where this district goes and I am so grateful to have had you here and to have known you um, I just appreciate you thank you <laughs> I will still keep knowing you Okay, thank you, Kate. Um, Lisa Collins. I don't have anything else to add um, with the Finance Committee, but also I wanted to say thank you to Jan. Um, you, you've been so impressive with um, your ability to deal with the curriculum end of things in the classroom and helping the teachers to and advocate for the teachers to use the technology um, so that they can. I guess have to deal with some of the things they need to work with with the Common Core and um, it's been pretty challenging I think for everyone with all the changes and I wish you weren't leaving yet with this digital transition but I think um, we've gained so many things with having you here so thank you that's it okay thank you um, Tim Mettinger uh, just a few quick things this evening uh, first off would also like to wish Jan well and thank her it's been a privilege to work with you so good luck uh, also a, a great night for the board meeting the friends of education is always a, a, a great night as well and certainly thanks to all of those who are recognized tonight but all of those who spend their time and volunteer um, in our in our schools and, and then the last thing I want to mention is the summer countdown is officially over um, <laughs> The, uh, uh, as you may have seen, the cars in the lot, the fall sports meeting is underway, and I picked That's up my 2015 fall athletic schedule tonight. And wow. some of those dates are coming up relatively soon, so it is uh, getting to be that time of year again. So, and that is all I have. All right, thank you. Gary Dunlap? I'd just like to uh, thank our volunteers as well. It's, uh, it's always a good night to honor those people when they come in. And I'd like to thank Jan for being part of our home and family as long as she was. And I wish her the best of luck. And I'm sure I'll see you around West Salem. <laughs> and then that's all I have to report and or discuss. All right. Tom Cruise. Yeah, when I saw Jan put up one finger, I knew that she was going to be leaving soon. So I, um, um, I also want to mimic all my peers here how much we enjoy working with you. And it's obvious that you had a pulse on this place and the frustrations you had from um, in the past um, finally it's nice to see that uh, all that hard work is coming through and I hope you enjoy your retirement and maybe uh, we can run across each other in RVs sometimes that would be kind of fun <laughs> too <laughs> yeah and also the uh, the volunteers it was uh, it makes our district district it is so thank you okay, thank you um, Jeff Young uh, as was said before the fall sports meeting was tonight and if you missed it, like I did, um, <laughs> I believe registration is online and also contact your coaches because that meeting is important. Um, the dance team is selling shirts for Corn Fest for $10, so they'll be grateful I said that, I guess. <laughs> Where are they available at? Uh, you can contact a dance member and then they probably have the shirts. Okay. Or, yeah. and, oh, for the... Um, 
friendship of education, it was neat to see uh, Mrs. Stacia get it because that was my kindergarten teacher. Aww. So <laughs> that was neat. So that's all I got. Thank you. Um, I I just had a couple things too. First, I just wanted to say thank you to Jan. Um, you've been around a very long time, and I know you've you've been here, gone to West Salem because we still get magazines and subscribe to your name. <laughs> so when I miss you, I'm just going to read, you know, Time Magazine and look at your name on the label or whatever. And, um, yeah, and then came back here. And it's amazing the amount of help you've given people without even knowing. I bet you have no idea the influence that you've had on people. And I remember emailing you, and you were on vacation, and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to send this email off, but she's not going to check it. So I didn't feel guilty emailing you because I was sure you were not going to be checking it. <laughs> and like literally within an hour, and you were either in Colorado or Florida, you emailed me back, and I felt so guilty because it was something that totally could have waited, but I had to send it out while it was on, on my mind. And you were like, I, I'll get back to you tomorrow, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I said, Jan, but you're on vacation. Right. So Jan is the kind of person who never is away from work, even when she's away from work. She's always working. And she always was doing whatever she could to keep the district up to speed the best she could. And she dealt with the frustrations that were in her, you know, day-to-day -day life the best she could. And always with grace and humility and you're just a treasure you're one of those people that like an icon so i'm very very sad to see you retire but you really deserve some time off yeah and i'm you do i'm really glad that you stuck around this long and thank you so very much for everything you've done for our district we love you Jane. <laughs> We feel sorry for um, Chris. <laughs> yes, yes. You can sure pick up the microphone and say whatever you want. I'll make it real short. Okay. I just want to thank you. I've never doubted that the school board here ever, ever did not support the effective use of educational technology in the district. There wasn't one, and I can look back on the wall and I can say there's not one on that board that when I was here ever, ever questioned the value of educational technology. Kudos to you. I want to thank Dr. Frick because he had the faith in me to do this job. And I believe that I held true to the promise that I made to him and that that was that we were going to be on a digital transition along the way no matter what obstacles we faced. And we are. It might have taken a little longer but I think we are. I think it is really, really important as you go forward to really watch what's happening with instruction and how it's in supported by educational technology because that's really, really where some amazing things are gonna happen. Support our teachers, support our secretaries, support our administrators as you always have. And I will just say, I'll never forget any of you and I appreciate everything you've done for me. So, thank you. Thank you. And the only other thing I wanted to say was thank you to the Friends of Education, um, uh, all of them. Um, they do an outstanding job and um, all of them were so humble with their they almost didn't want the um, the acknowledgement that they were doing anything out of the ordinary and they almost didn't want the limelight they were almost turning their heads away so typical of people who are so giving kind of like Jan futzing with their papers right now it doesn't want to be that <laughs> anyhow <coughs> recognize them also um, and that is it so is there any other business that needs to come before the board if not I would entertain a motion to adjourn so move is there a second a second any discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed? motion carried we are adjourned at 752